Hey guys, Mike here. So in this video, we're going to be pouring a floor for this house. And we're going to be using a Viber screen on quite a bit of it. So you're going to see that. That's going to be pretty cool. Now, a lot of houses in Maine have a, a frost wall like this because we got to get the wall down below the frost line. The frost here in Maine goes down about four feet. So this is what we call a frost wall. And then, so it's basically a slab on grade. But it's, but it's got a frost wall and what they did was they filled the whole thing right back in up four feet and now we're pouring the floor right at this level. A lot of floors in Maine too you'll see they'll put styrofoam under them with the poly vapor barriers and that's a state code number one but it does help insulate the floor and it helps keep the concrete a little bit warmer than if you didn't have any styrofoam under it. So we're getting the first truck dumped out. We got three trucks coming here today for this. We use our normal floor mix is a 3500 PSI with a mix of three quarter inch and three eighths inch aggregate. So we call that a blend. And it's got fiber mesh in it too for reinforcement. That's why you don't see any wire rebar here. We don't need them in these types of floors. We just use the fiber mesh. And we also saw cut our contraction joints right after we get done power trialing. So this will be a really smooth finished power trial floor and the owners can decide if they want to leave the floor as the finished floor or put some type of flooring over it afterwards. Now right now I'm just magging my edges smooth with the top of that wall. That's going to be what I'm going to use to go by when we screed. And then I also use a laser level with my receiver right there to shoot some grades on the inside and I call those wet pads so I'll be making wet pads on the inside of the floor and then we'll use those to screed off from two to get our our screed pads ready to go we also another thing we put in our mix which a lot of people don't and, and you might not know about this it's we put a water reducer in there and with a water reducer that allows you to it's like a super plasticizer. It allows you to pour the concrete at a lot looser slump without adding water. So it just loosens up the mix and it makes for pouring a lot easier, especially on floors like this that are just flat. We can pour what's called about a seven slump. Seven slumps actually would be considered too wet without water reducer, but with it, it's not. It's actually about a three inch slump and then they add the water reducer and it loosens it up like this. So it, it just makes pouring real easy. And for us, you know, a small crew like us that pours concrete floors or slabs or pool decks or something, we pour every single day. You know, we like to have a good workable mix. And you can see how easy that is to work with. So Darren and Luke right now, they're just, they're striking off what we call a screed pad. And then Darren can use, Darren's on the left, Luke's on the right. Darren can use that screed pad to screed off from the same as Luke's using the pad by the concrete wall to go off from. Now we don't typically use a, a vibrating screed in and around pipes like this. This will this will be like a kitchen and in the house and then they, there's some pipes on the other side that'll probably be a bathroom. But we, we like screeding around pipes like this with a hand screed. It's just for us it's just easier and faster. We'll set, you know, we'll go around those pipes, we'll set over them, and then we'll just, you know, take out any little bit of high that's left behind there, and then we'll just bow float that like that. Now on this other side where there's no pipes here, now I'm going to use the vibrating screed. This one's the screed demon from MBW. This is their gas-powered one. They got a battery one too that we have that works really, really nice. I'm going to show you the gas one on this job. That one's got a 12-foot board on it. And it's probably about the easiest thing you're going to use to screed with. You can see you just set it down. The board kind of floats on the concrete. And all I'm really looking for is I'm looking at each end, making sure each end is is scoring on those pads. What I mean, what I mean by scoring is it's leaving a tiny little line behind as I go, and it's not it's not sinking in too far, and it's not rising up above the pad. That means I'm nice and level, and you can see when you run that bow float over it, there's no, there's no dips or humps or anything like that. It's really nice and level, the, and then the bow float smooths it right out. It makes it real easy bow floating. You can see the how it consolidates and vibrates the concrete. 
I got a link for that down in the description, guys, if you want to check that out. I, you know, if you haven't used one or if you're looking for one, I would definitely recommend either this gas-powered one or their battery one. Either one you really can't go wrong on. My job's really the easy job. That's me running the screen. <laughs> it's the it's the two rakers behind you that are the one doing most of the work. So we'll get that first truck dumped. Now we're going to start this second one. We'll get this thing all dumped out. And then we'll get it screeded and then we'll get on to that third one. You can see how nice it is pouring up against, you know, just a concrete wall like that that's right even with the floor. They also put that two inch styrofoam up the edge of the wall as just like a like a thermal break almost. It, it keeps the cold from the outside, you know, from getting into that reaching the floor on the inside. Yeah, so I'm making another one of my wet pads. We use that laser level and we use wet pads on, you know, all our floors and slabs like this. There's all kinds of different ways to do it, but this is the way we were taught. This is the way that we feel is really efficient for us. It's fast. That, that vibrating speed right there probably weighs about 35 to 40 pounds. It's not too heavy. And it's got that nice little handle on it. makes it easy to move around. Yeah, you can see the rakers. The rakers behind you are really the key. You know, they, they need to make sure the concrete is just at the right level. And that really makes the screed easy. If you if you were to try to do this without rakers behind you, you'd, you'd be really slow. You'd be stopping and starting, filling and pulling back. And I don't know. It just wouldn't be, it wouldn't be as efficient for sure without any rakers. You can do it with one if you had to, as long as that raker is really, really good. We generally like to have two though. That's a really good shot of that, how that screed works. It just, it really shows you, you know, how it, how it levels out the surface, how it consolidates the concrete, brings up a little bit of paste for you for when, when it comes time to power trial finish, that makes it a little bit easier to finish than trying to finish those rocks and the aggregate right at the surface. These are the types of floors, you know, we pour a lot of these floors inside foundations. You know, I know you guys down south. Whoop. <laughs> That's Jeff. He's a temporary worker. He just tripped over an anchor bowl. <laughs> but a lot of you guys down south, I know, um, you don't have foundations. It's mostly all on slabs. Now, we do a lot of slabs up here, too, what we call monolithic slabs, slabs where the edges are thicker. You have a big beam around the edges. So we do a bunch of those, too, for houses. And I've got a bunch of those videos also if you want to check them out. But um, probably over half of the floors we do probably have a foundation in them like this, I would say. That's my little shoot cleaning trick. Let me know if any of you guys do that too <laughs> down in the comments. Um, if I don't have my shovel right there with me, I just I just jump up there and clean it out with my boot and get him get him out of the way. Because that the next one, the next truck's always usually sitting there waiting. So we try to get them in, in and out as fast as we can. So this will be one floor that we pour today. You know, we'll get this poured, get it both loaded, and then I'll probably we'll leave two guys here to power trial, and then three of us will go on to another job. And if it's a small one, you know, we'll pour and finish that. If it's not then we'll just get it ready for the next day or two days later or a week later. But typically we'll be working on two to three jobs every single day at some, at some point, whether we're forming or pouring, you know, or something like that. But that's a basic, pretty simple day for us. So it's, it's 10 to 15 jobs every single week that we, we'll be working on different jobs. And like this is considered a one day job. We show up, we're hired just to pour and finish the concrete floor. We're a sub here, we're working for the foundation people. And the foundation people give us, these foundation, the ones who did this one probably give us, I don't know, 150, 
jobs a year like this and then we have multiple other ones so they just text us and say hey this is ready this is ready go check it out then it's up to me to get it scheduled get the concrete ordered and all and all that stuff so it's typically pretty busy from april to like december around here but that's how we do our work guys let me know if you do it similar to us down in the comments thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one